Right, so I've wired it all in, tested it, and it wasn't firing properly. Um, it was moving the point blades okay, but the polarity switch thing itself wasn't moving that well. So I t needed to adjust it, obviously, but then the problem is, once you've drilled the holes, you can't really adjust them that much. So I tried opening the holes out, and then at a funny angle, and then, you know, you know drilling it in, screwing it in. That didn't work either, it just was like willy and welly. So... I saw a video on YouTube where this guy used double-sided Velcro, so I thought, well, I'll use this stuff. Double-sided spongy sticky tape works very well. Very well. I've used it before. Once it once it sticks properly, it sticks really well. So this is just reinforcement. I might not even need this, you know. But have a look. There you go, all the way. So. I think we're going to be okay. If it does come loose, well, I know what to do. Just enforce it a bit more. So what I'm going to do now is go and get the voltmeter, or the continuity test, or whatever, and see if the frog is behaving properly. If it's not, all you have to do is change these middle two, the um, red and the black, to swap it over on, on this side. Easy. So I'll see you in a bit. I'm underneath the board, so it's a bit hard to show you neatly. I doubt you can understand that. Um, basically... Um, I had a lot of trouble trying to work out how to get the thing to work properly electrically. I was using the voltmeter or, or continuity tester and it was just confusing me and I kept thinking it was wrong. And then I decided to actually put a couple of droppers in, connect it up there, jump the trap power around so you got like a, you know, it goes to both. And at the moment this particular one is rigged up with the actual, that big switch baby switch and um well it actually works i must have understood this bit because i haven't really changed anything it was just the continuity thing was confusing me um and this rigging yeah it's a pain it's so messy it's awkward but we got there eventually right so and this engine hasn't really been running properly yet, so it's still a bit stuttery at times, but never mind. We'll get there. So, observe. Well, good, good start, yes. Come on, don't let me look at the idiot. Okay, so, bottom track, fine. Bear with me, hang on. Now, I can't change this using the motor because the motor thing is connected to that one, so I'll just mechanically throw it with my finger from underneath. Just throws better underneath than from the top. Uh, where are we? Where are we? There we go. Right. Middle one. Uh, switchy switch, switch. So there we go. The polarity switch obviously worked. I managed to do it correctly. Stop stalling, naughty boy. Uh, it is a big fat plastic arbor frog, I suppose. So anyway, this is code 55, it, sorry, no, it's code 80, it was code 55 origin, originally, uh, I couldn't get the join properly, this whole piece was flexible, and so eventually I ripped it out, put in this set trap piece in, and that bit's flexible, just need to glue it down, okay. This is a fine trex, code 40, joined to code 100, yep, odd, I oh, know, pretty bad join, horrible big fat solder lumps, I don't mind too much, like I said, I'm just, as long as I can get this thing to work fine, I'll be happy, but look at the difference in the track, that code 40 looks pretty damn real.
of the code 80. Mm, not sure, <laughs> No. I prefer the code 40. And it's easy to work with. It doesn't look too bad when it joins to 55. Mm. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. Joining to 100 there is not so bad. I suppose when you ballast it, it'll all blend in a bit better. So that's the progress. It's took a while to get here. Mainly because uh, this week has just been busy up, it's been wiped out. But, like I said, this bit's all just needs gluing down. I ballasted that because I wanted to, instead of putting a teeny bit of Bostic on, I wanted a thick layer of PVA. If I put a thick bit of PVA on, I'll just throw the ballast on top of it and then blow it off. And then instant ballast and no faffing about. Okay, I could have cut, I could have cut the, uh, the bed in for packing height a bit neater to give it a more, you know, better ballast shoulder effect, I suppose, but we can probably do some of that later. So yeah, it's not really moved on much since last. It's a very short update. Um, at this point, there's no motor in it. And it's not going to have one for a while because I can't actually put one here because of this baseboard strut. So, whoops. So I'm going to have to put one sort of here and then it extend the drive somehow. I'm not worried about it. It's a plastic frog. I can operate it with, with, the, with the finger and it still electrically works. So I'm, I'm, that's fine. I mean, I'm, I plan to operate it from where I'm standing for the most part anyway. So click, click. But yeah, I'll, I'll sort that out later on. Um, and that's it really. This, I struggle to understand it, same as a lot of people do. I saw something that says it's basically just two points end and end, so you just got to remember, that's your point motor, which is joined to that frog, which is joined to that frog. That's the next point motor, which is joined to that frog. It's simple, these two frogs are joined together and joined there. That frog is joined to there. Uh, simple. It is. It is. It's not. It's just like doing two points end on end. I got stressed earlier. Got me off. Got wound up. Couldn't work out what's going on. It's because the continuity test was confusing me. Right. I am now rambling. I don't have anything interesting else to show you, so I will switch the video off. Whee! Right. Can you see what I've done here? Black, red, white, white. Blue, green, green. Okay, same, same, same. Because of this. Okay, have one here, there, there, and there. And um, basically, this is what you've already seen on the other videos. There's nothing really new to show. That's partly why it's been taking a while to give updates because I've just been repeating the same things everywhere. Obviously, you've got the three-way point there. The six wires instead of the three, so these will all have the six wires. That's it, really. All I'm doing now is what I've again I've already showed you on a different video. Just trimming them to length, real easy. There you go. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So, okay, a bit dark here, so I'm going to do it on this. Just done this one, so without trying to bore you, I'm just going to do exactly what I've just done. Show you what I've been doing. about that did that work but spiked it it's on the mend
Okay, so. Plies of the left hand, flux thing of the right hand. It's a brush. Dip it in the flux. I did two wires at a time, so put it where you want it. Dab that on there. Put this where you want it. Dab a bit on there. Put the brush down. Keep the them in your hand. Get the finger burner out, which I've already burnt it once today. Put some solder on the end of it. This isn't how you apparently do electrical solder. You're supposed to let's say put the heat on it, introduce the solder. With this stuff, it don't matter. Car's electrical solder. It's just so easy. It's so easy. Seriously, I put the flux on. Hold it. Watch. That's it, right? That ain't going nowhere. Literally. You know? It ain't going nowhere. It's a good join. Just in case. Right. Two, pick up the brush again. Red one to D, black one to E. Now F goes to the frog on this wiring method, so I decided to use stereotypical green because a lot of frogs are depicted as green, so it's just easy to remember. Okay, now because I clipped the ends and I basically tinned them, did the same to that, put the flux on, blah blah blah. How hard was that? It's not. Very easy, very quick, strong joins, job is a good one. So now I'm going to do that one and that one. There's no point filming it because I've just showed you how to do it. And then we come to the testing. So, yeah. Hope that helped in some way. Okay, I've done them all now. With this one I've rigged it a bit differently, what I've done is, because it's going to be a crossover, and I want to do this business, my thinking, I haven't really looked at a book because I've not found it, but I think, because the outside ones operate the mechanics, you want them to go the opposite way, so I've joined this top one to that bottom one, that top one to this bottom one, and if there's any frog polarity, it's usually just switch the middle black and red, and it seems to be working. This one isn't throwing quite as far, but it still seems to be throwing enough to throw the point. And looking at the switch, it looks like it might be okay, so we'll see how it goes. But if you look at this one, that's bottom, that's top. And the alternator. So, I think we've on to a winner. Obviously the proper test is to stick a locomotive on and see what happens. So, in fact, I will do that now. 
Okay, the engine stopped at the frog as expected. Went underneath, started faffing, then realised, oh yeah, it's going to stop at the frog because obviously I haven't put any power into it from underneath. So I'm going to have to leave it for a bit, wire part the layout up, and then I'll test it more thoroughly. Uh, there's one other problem. Um, I've accidentally buggered it up. Hmm. Yes. I think I have to buy a new one. I could make one, but, eh, well, it's not the end of the world, but, I mean, eh. so, I'll leave it there for the time being, and, uh, well, you can see what's left, I mean, once this, this has all been done, put the tracks in, which are there at the moment, and then it's just a case of sticking those bits in, and them, and that is a track laying done. Wire it up and stuff, met the control panel. Ah, I'm just a bit annoyed about this now. But never mind. I mean, we've made quite a bit of progress anyway. They've all thrown properly now, so I'm happy. I mean, this is down. And that's up, and I tested it earlier. Um, in fact, there you go. So, I'm happy with that. I mean, I worked out just using my own noggin, which is surprising with me, because electrics are not my strong point. Anyway, as usual, leave comments, tell me what you think, and you'll see me in the next video.